building a Todd Morton Pier. So you want to build a pier. Wonderful idea. Brilliant idea. I had the same idea in my own self. Some of you may not want to tell your semi-old back about what you're getting ready to do. I want to appear as I have come to understand that it saves time and makes for better accuracy. But we may be moving east sometime soon, and I want to lessen the permanent pier factor. Consequently, I did not want to have to go to a concrete pier as its, its permanency factor was very high. Also, semi-old, semi-retired, semi-stingy, so I was looking for something cheaper than what most Astro companies are selling by way of steel piers. So while perusing the broad way of ideas sharing on the web, I bumped into a little thing called a Todd Morden Pier. And then I found a site called A Pier in Our Backyard. I will leave the link to that site below. Great site, great narrative of building a pier. So using it as a guide, I began. My first step in my endeavor to image the sky better and more accurately was to remove two large pecan trees that are right in M31's path. Squirrels were not happy, still not happy, but I promised to share photos with them. I then waited till evening and found the best spot to place the pier in my Bortle 8 backyard. Next, dug a hole uh, about 18 by 18 by 18, took four 50-pound bags of concrete. Note the comment about the bags above. And following his suggestion, Nick's suggestion, I put four anchor bolts in an 18 by 18 slab as a base to set the concrete, uh, the uh, base atop the concrete. I made an effort to have the slab level and pretty well pointed to true north, which for me is 3 degrees 15 uh, minutes from magnetic north uh, where I live here in Dallas. 24 hours to set up. I set three 8 by 8 by 16 concrete blocks upon which the mount would sit and glued and bolted them together. In hindsight, and after setting the mount in telescope, I would have made one of them an 8 by 8 by 8 as the telescope tops out at over 8 feet now. I can work around it, but if I do a second one, and I already have the materials uh, and the plans ready to go, it will be 8 inches shorter. I would also suggest trying to do a pilot hole prior prior to drilling the blocks as they ain't the smoothest things to try to get an accurate hole drilled. And perhaps use a drill bit just a little bit bigger than the hole, the bolts for wiggle room and some adjustment. Besides the metal pier most folks use, the adapter to the mount that sits atop the pier can be very expensive. As Nick mentions in the site, there's a cheaper and just as effective substitute. Several other people mentioned this also. A car brake rotor. In the case of a Celestron CGX a 2010 Malibu LS's rear rotor, I bought one off Amazon for $33 and one from AutoZone for $59. The AutoZone fit just that much better. If I were more patient, I would have gone to a junkyard for uh, cheaper still, but this ain't a cheap hobby any way you look at it, and despite the lies you tell to your spouse. My brother had a drill press, so I headed his way, and he and his son helped me drill the holes that joined the two rotors and the holes that joined the mount to the rotors. My brother only had SAE tap and dies, and so we used that to drill and tap the holes to the rotor, a new skill I have since picked up. In hindsight, I should have sprung the extra bucks for a metric set and then been able to use the one set of screws. It works out because the holes in the mount are about the same size. Nick suggests if you properly laid uh, the concrete, the slab, and the blocks, it should all be level so no need for an elaborate spider system you see some folks have on their mounts to get the two rotors to level the mount. Mine was pretty level but not quite what I wanted, so I used pennies to achieve the last bit of leveling. Uh, six cents if I remember correctly. I may try screws for just that bit more accuracy, but Nick says you don't need it, but I may try it anyway. I put on the mount and then the scope. It is tall but solid. I have a border collie who wants to do astrophotography, but she always tries to get me to image serious for some reason or other. If 
If I don't, she barks and jumps at the scope, so I've installed a canine impediment screen to keep me on target, the target that I want, to keep her from imaging serious without my permission. My hope and plan is to build a shed around it, possibly large enough for two peers, Lord willing. I have so far shot M27, the Dumbbell Nebula. The peer made a massive difference in setup time and tracking that I was hoping for. I highly recommend this for you who are considering a, a peer. It's solid and it's inexpensive and it's pretty quick to set up.